achieve food security in the country by distributing fertilizers free to farmers in Nasrawa State. And in Edo State, four people have been confirmed killed by trees which fell down in Uzairue Market of Edo North Senatorial District. Plus, trending news in the world of sports. Hello and welcome to Panorama, reaching you live from our Abuja studio. I am Zenret Dingmon, and thanks for joining us. The Nigerian Senate says Nigeria is open to investors, especially in the power, education, construction, and other key sectors critical to economic development. The Deputy Speaker, President of the Senate, Barrow Jibrin, made the assertion during an engagement with a group of Chinese investors, adding that the National Assembly is committed to making legal provisions that will enhance business regulations and operations in Nigeria for mutual benefits. It's a country that's endowed with uh, solid mineral, um, petroleum, gas, and so on and so forth. So you have made the best decision by coming into Nigeria. The entire national focus, the number one priority we have now, is that of uh, getting self-sufficiency in energy. Delegation comprising representatives of eight administrative and business entities from Qingdao, China, were at the National Assembly to seek deepen collaboration on long-standing trade and economic cooperation between the two countries. The chairman of the Standing Committee of Qingdao Municipal People's Congress, Wang Luming, spoke through an interpreter. One of the other purposes to strengthen the cooperation in the vocational education and the talents training. Uh, uh, in Qingdao, we have a very famous company which is called Soundmaker Energy. Uh, they have invested a lot in African countries, including in Nigeria. Uh, we would like to strengthen the cooperation in education, uh, in vocational education um, uh, area, and also the techniques and skills training. Meanwhile, Senate has urged the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission to protect Nigerians from exploitation by multinational companies, especially satellite service providers. This was at the screening of Olatunji Bellu as Chief Executive Officer of the Commission. Ignatius Sunko reports. Olatunji Bellu, presidential nominee for the position of Chief Executive Officer, an executive vice chairman of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, appearing before the Senate Committee on Trade and Investment for screening. Now, as you are all aware, the purpose is to screen him so that we are sure that you know he's, he's fit for this job. And we have his CV, we have his documents. Senators demanded to know his plans for the protection of consumers in Nigeria and measures to enhance free trade and competition. You are against anti-competition, but you are not against free trade. But at times you see them overlap. So I would like to find out what your own opinion is. About the practices of satellite television service providers. For example, DSTV. I do not think there is absolute free trade anywhere. So, and, I, and we must try as much as possible to ensure there is competition in our economic revolution amongst traders. And we also need to protect, the, to protect the interests of Nigerian consumers. To me, first of all, we must protect the national interests. Senators from Lagos State described the nominee as an accomplished professional and advised him to leverage on the trust the president has in him to strengthen the commission. He's an accomplished journalist. Then in the, in the area of public administration and public service as well, he has been at the forefront of major development in Lagos. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission monitors and regulates competition, market activities, and to ensure protection of consumers. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The federal government has further taken steps to achieve food security in the country by distributing fertilizers free to farmers in Nasrawa State. Aliu Tijani reports that more than 1,000 farmers 
from Nasrawa State have been selected to benefit from the intervention. Farmers in Nasrawa State are excited as trailer loads of fertilizer under the federal government food security program arrived at state for distribution. The fertilizers will be distributed free to the benefiting farmers to support them and encourage many to return to farm. The joy of a farmer, and this, with the aid of this fertilizer, will to help the growth of our farm. And we appreciate the government. I will use it in my farm so that it will improve the rest that I plant. Okay. This fertilizer, uh, you will help me a lot. Because I don't have money to buy this thing. 80 bags of NPK and 20 bags of urea are what each of the 147 electoral wards of the state will receive for 100 farmers each. The selection process for the beneficiaries, federal government says, is devoid of political or religious influence. Governor Abdullah Isuli flags of the distribution in Awe and Obi on behalf of the federal government. The credit first goes to Mr. President Asuajubola Mentinibu, who in reality directed to release the fertilizer in stock so that we can come and take this fertilizer to the various states at no cost to the states. Farmers in other local government areas of the state are expected to benefit in the coming days. In Obi, Ali Utijani, NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government says it is engaging labor unions in a fair and equitable process capable of sus sustaining the aspirations of every Nigerian worker. Minister of State for Labor and Employment in Kiruka Onye Jocha stated this at a one-day retreat on labor reforms and the quest for living wage in Nigeria, organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies in Abuja. Mohammed Rabiu Ali completes the story. I would say effective labor administration is considered key in promoting sustainable development of any nation. It is in this line the legislature and the executive arms are working to review existing labor laws in Nigeria that will provide a conducive working environment, thereby improving workers' productivity and economic growth. As we embark on these reforms, we are particularly focused on factories and industrial parks. These areas are critical to our industrial strategy and the well-being of thousands of workers. These subjects, contentious and divisive as they be, has been and remains one of the most pressing issues facing the administration of President Oda and and the country at large. It is imperative that we join forces to ensure that our labor relations system is fair, just, equitable and equitable. It is therefore imperative for the legislature to understand the process or processes of the minimum wage and its implication for workers' welfare, economic growth, and the national development of the nation. We knew that this year's minimum wage is going to be very difficult because negotiating wage increment in an era where you have both fiscal and monetary challenges in your economy it is expected at the end of the workshop, participants will have a deeper knowledge on the process of minimum wage enactment and the need for due diligence to ensure workers' productivity and economic growth. In Abuja, Mohamed Raibuali, NTA News. Motorists in Abuja are lamenting long hours spent on queues in search of fuel. Correspondent Lydia Sampson reports that a visit to most petrol stations in Abuja shows that motorists are still experiencing long queues, according to them. Some of them have, some of them have, according to them, what suddenly began last week is not showing any sign of abating. It's early as 4 a.m. Okay. I couldn't get fuel until about 12 noon. That was yesterday. Nothing has improved because when he started, there are more 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 fuel stations selling fuel, but the way he's looking at 
almost all the filling stations that we're selling on Friday and Saturday, most of them are out of work. They said it is frustrating that they have to queue for over three hours before they can buy petrol, while some stations are not selling at all. And there is no any official statement from the government or NNPC of what is happening. I don't know the cause. I was even asking the fuel attenders, he said he does not even know as well. So I was even asking him, is he panic buying or what? He said he doesn't know. So I really don't even have an idea. They appeal for quick intervention of government and stakeholders. Meanwhile, the NNPC Limited has attributed fuel queues in the Federal Capital Territory and some parts of the country to disruption of ship-to-ship -ship transfer of petrol between mother vessels and daughter vessels, resulting from recent floods. A statement from Olufemi Shonoye, Chief Corporate Communications Officer, NNPC Limited, says the adverse weather condition has also affected berthing at jetties, truck load out and transportation of products to filling stations, causing disruption in station supply logistics. The NNPC Limited also states that due to flammability of petrol products and in compliance with the Nigeria meteorological agency NIMET regulations, it was impossible to load petrol during rainstorms and lightning. In adherence to these regulations, the NNPC Limited says any deviation could pose severe danger to the trucks, filling stations and human lives. Similarly, the development, according to Chief Corporate Communication Officer, was compounded by consequential flooding of truck routes, which has also which has also constrained movement of petroleum from the coastal corridors to the federal capital, Abuja. The NNPC Limited says it is working with relevant stakeholders to resolve the logistic challenges and restore seamless supply of petrol to affected areas. Already, loading has commenced in areas where these challenges have subsided and stakeholders are hoping the situation will continue to improve in the coming days. NNPC also calls on motorists to avoid panic buying and hoarding of petroleum products. Now in line with NIMIT's heavy rainfall prediction for some states in Nigeria, residents of Yenigua have started experiencing flood due to daily intensity of the rains. Residents of affected areas want relevant government agencies to construct drainages to channel water into nearby canals to curb the unpleasant situation. Doris Akumunye has details. July to October are seasons where coastal communities like Bayosa experience heavy rainfall, which has devastating impact on residents yearly. However, in tune with the CS9 minutes prediction, after several hours of heavy rain, we started about 3 a.m. Monday morning. Residents are already experiencing flash flood, which disrupted their daily activities and access to their homes. In Nyekezimene Street off Bakery Road in Azikoro Town is already flooded, as residents find it difficult to get to school and their offices. If there is drainage, I think there will be a way the water can pass through. This load is very, very, very bad. So today, yesterday, then fall to the day can see that flooded everywhere, so we try to open the drainage so that we have food, easy food. Other areas affected are joining streets which are currently impassable. They are appealing to the state government to be alive to their responsibility and reduce the plight of people in the affected areas. Calling on the state governor to make, uh, possibly make uh, solutions to see how we can uh, uh, cut the the flood so that when the flood comes this time around it will not affect us the way it affected us the last time. Residents equally blame the situation to proper implementation of town planning laws as developers who build on natural canals which is a major contributory factor to increase flood in the state. In Yenegoa, Doris Akomonye, NCA News. Now about four people have been confirmed killed by trees which fell down in Uzarwe Market, popularly known as Jatu Market, following the heavy downpour in Edo North Senatorial District of the state. 
Victor Odoin Acha, who was at the market, reports that several people sustained various degrees of injury in the accident. Four big trees, which are said to have lived for about 200 years at different locations in the two market, were said to have fallen simultaneously at about 9 o'clock on Monday morning, following a heavy wind which accompanied the Monday downpour in the two Three women lost their lives to the trees, while one died with her baby in her back, bringing the total number of casualty to four. At the time of visit to the market, rescue operation was ongoing, coordinated by the chairman of Isako West local government area. Some eyewitnesses say they heard a loud noise before the trees suddenly got uprooted at the same time, thereby destroying lives and property. As the red, the now we just hear sound like speed, they call like whistle. Before you know, three don't fall poof our body, we dare on a red ground. They before poof our body, now I call the shot, God comes to rescue me, I feel get up. Now I enter market, they shot me, they help me. So we just come market with shade. We see say breeze, it's just the blow. We don't know say na better rain will fall. Later we call say the this wood, the hand, the just fall poof for that side. It caught poof for that side. So we just sit down, be like, if they fall like that before. Between 30 minutes, I just said, chair where I take sit down, it's just they raise up. Small tiger, again, it's just pull walls. And where the wood fall, it not show the sound of something fall, but we just say wood fall. Chairman of Isako West Local Government Area, Mohiz Marvelo Zibiri, who is supervising the rescue operation, said they have mobilized source and operators to the market for further rescue. I see we have engaged the services of a, 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 a wood operator to help us uh, cut the trees into pieces so that we can completely remove them and know and be sure that uh, there are no casualties under there. Okay. That's exactly what happened. It's a natural disaster that uh, surprises everybody and as we speak we are mourning. We are mourning the entire local government, particularly from this area, we are mourning and I'm very, very, I feel very, very bad about what happened. At the time of filing this report, the injured have been taken to the hospital for treatment, while the bodies of the deceased have been deposited in the mortuary. In Jetu, Victor Odion Acha, and the News. We now take a break. Panorama continues shortly. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days, you probably do not know what it is. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. For staying tuned. Our President Paula Ahmed Tinibu extends his best wishes and congratulations to renowned Islamic leader Sheikh Dahiru Usman Bauchi on attaining the milestone age of 100. President Tinibu describes Sheikh Dahiru Bauchi as a shining light who has significantly contributed to shaping Islamic knowledge as well as moral and ethical standards in modern Nigeria. The president thanks the Tijaniya leader for dedicating his life to spreading knowledge and raising generations of Nigerians. On this momentous occasion, President Tinubu prays for greater wisdom and good health for the venerable Sheikh. And in a concerted effort to enhance accessibility to clean, portable drinking water across the Niger Basin Authority, 
the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation has highlighted the pivotal role of unity among member states and commitment towards improving water governance and sustainable management. Usman Zubairi reports that this came to the fore at a sub-regional workshop for validating study reports of the transboundary ecosystem of the Mandara Mountains holding in Abuja. This regional workshop is to aim at sustaining the management of transboundary ecosystem and their biodiversity. That the discussion will be fruitful and lively with relevant outcomes, commensurate with the challenges that beset the transboundary ecosystems of the Mount, of the Mount Mandara Plateau and Sena or Abuba in Gida. Mount Mandara Plateau shares between Cameroon and Nigeria, while Sena or Abuba has the same ecosystem as Cameroon and Chad. These important ecosystems have garnered the attention of the Niger Basin Authority. Uh, aside from this expectation, we have the operationalization of the project. So the next stage is to come to this very hotel to set up a platform at the national level, both in Cameroon, Nigeria, the Chad and uh, that of Cameroon. So this is what we are expecting from the participants. The expected outcome of the workshop to deliberate and validate various study reports on how to improve water governance and sustainable management, capacity building, as well as joint managing of transboundary ecosystem monitoring mechanisms. The workshop is to last for three days. Usmosber, NTA News. Our Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Gbaja Biamila, is advising Nigerian youths to pursue excellence with unyielding spirit that will safeguard the future of the country. Gbaja Biamila was speaking at a town hall meeting and inauguration of the third fellowship cohort of the Legislative Mentorship Initiative at the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. Mohamed Rabiu Ali reports. The Leadership Mentorship Initiative is a program initiated by the Chief of Staff to the President, Bajabia Miller, during his speakership position at the House of Representatives. The objective is to mentor young Nigerians in legislative and other endeavors. Youth from across the country are grouped into cohorts and exposing them to theoretical and practical leadership skills. We remain committed to standing firmly behind you nurturing your growth, and celebrating your successes. I salute you all. You are indeed the future of this country. And from all I have heard, that future is very bright. I urge you to continue to remain steadfast in our pursuit of excellence and our commitment to building a brighter, more inclusive future for this country, Nigeria. Fellows of the program contributed and asked questions to get better insights into the program in Abuja. Mohamed Rabi Ali, NTA News. Let's now join Gift George for stories trending in the sporting world. In basketball, as Nigeria's women's basketball team, the D Tigress, intensified their preparations in Germany ahead 